the day. Very important to both clubs. And Ratton and Tudor get involved, two of the lesser lights. The umpire proceeds to bounce the ball. It comes to Hawking. It's the hand pass into open space. Riccardi goes off the ground, down towards right half forward, then runs onto the ball, hooks it towards the pocket. Brownless. Sexton from behind, works him towards the boundary, out of bounds on the full, off the boot of the Carlton defender. So Bill Brownless has this kick in the right full forward pocket. The kick from just outside the 50. Long one down towards full forward. Ratton goes up, fisting away. Hogg missed it. Couch is in there. Didn't have it. We'll get the free kick. Yes, he was just scragged a little bit whilst attacking the football. I also noticed off the ball there that Mel Hanna was preventing Gary Ablett from running at the ball. He'll see this infringement. Didn't look to be a great deal in it. Perhaps a little bit of nerves from the umpire. Couch directly in front. Goal. Yes, an excellent start to Geelong, getting away to a fly, a quick goal. Paul Couch on screen. He's had a bit of an up-and-down season, started slowly, has got into some form there. Well, there you see that perhaps the arm around the shoulder, perhaps justifying that free kick. As it's always, it's where the free kicks are paid, not how many. Madden, approaching 250 games. Barnes goes with him. Hocking for the second time. Wins the first ball out of the centre and gets a free kick. Called to play on. Stoneham was one option. Goes on the left foot. Two half forward. O'Reilly there with Dean. Christo off the ground. Williams is there. Left foot by Merriman. Didn't go a long way. Hannah kept his hands off Ablett that time. Out of play, Tudor and Ratton. Great work by Gary Hocking in the centre. He had Stoneham on the burst, but if he had have given that handball, he would have run straight bang into some trouble. Elected to hold the football and then get rid of it with a kick. Madden to Williams, to Hannah, to Ratton. A quick kick to centre half back. Hinkley attacks it. De Ulio with him. Hinkley looks for a free kick. Play on called. Hocking's hard tackle gives it away. It'll go to Gleeson. Hocking gives him something to go on with. Just impedes him a little. So Gleeson from centre half back. Carlton trailing by a goal. Madden, Stephen Hocking will go. Madden tapped it on, but he didn't have any support. Bradley didn't read that particularly well. Riccardi dashes in. Brownless and Ablett. Brownless and Dean. Dean runs it to the boundary line and out of play. A lot of people thought Dean would get the job on Ablett. He's been in terrific form in the last match or two, Dean. But uh, Ablett, the job so far with Hannah. The Blues trail by a goal. Thick pace, perhaps the critical factor there, Bruce. That had been a bit wetter. Perhaps Dean would have been given that role. It's out of bounds again and will be tossed in. Inside the attacking 50 for the Cats, who have done all the attacking so far. Brownless and Madden. Madden decisively. Bearstow. Ratten. It spills to Tudor. Short passes intelligently. O'Reilly. O'Reilly will kick from right on the 50. Hasn't kicked too many goals in his career. The ninth man taken in the 1991 draft. Should get the distance from here. It's a goal. Yes, and it was a good goal to O'Reilly. And just to update his statistics for you, Dennis, he, this is his fourth goal in AFL football. He kicked a couple last week, or when they last played, I should say. And obviously, Blight likes to play him at centre-half forward because of that pace factor. A little bit down in that area, can cope with it in that position. Free kick out of the centre, going to Geelong. Carlton with an extra player in there. So the Cats off to a fly here. Couch and O'Reilly, the goal scorers. Is that 50 metres? Well, you can imagine what's going through David Parkin's mind at the moment. A free kick given in the centre square for in one player too many in there, and then either Hogg or De Ulio running across the mark, 
And now Barnes, without having to really contest the footy, has a shot for goal. And this would really sting on a cold day. Couldn't think of a worse result if you're a Blues. Have a look at that. Straight through. Well, that's your nightmare come true. Well, it is if you're a Carlton supporter. And uh, the big test for Geelong, of course, will be perhaps in the second and third quarters. When you've missed a lot of football, you often can come out with a run and then hit that flat spot. If they can get over that flat spot, then this early part of the game will have certainly set them up. But Barnes, a very good player, really came into his own in the final se series of last year and a fantastic way to start. But uh, two goals from free kicks to Carlton. They're going to have to watch their discipline. So the Cats purring on all six at the present time. Back in the middle, Madden. Over the top of Barnes, thumps it out wide, but Scott leads back in the race, gets an obliging bounce and boots it down towards half auto Riley. Despairing dive, missed it, Couch is over the ball, Dean is over him in the back, quite right. So Couch will get the free on the other side, half forward flank. Plays on immediately, probing kick down towards the kickoff line. Sexton over the top, Ratten fists away, slapped out of there by Scholl, taken by Gleeson, confronted, slapped away in turn. Ratten, it comes down towards O'Reilly, who snaps a goal and misses to the left hand side. Or was it Pickering? It may have been Pickering, it was. Thinking quickly in that pack, getting booped to ball, but just wide. I don't think Carlton have had it over halfway. It's been to the left for the whole of the match. Hannah's kick. And another one. Not touched. Free kick to Geelong. Well, they've been given some gifts early. Here's Hinkley. He's had an injury marred season along with a number of other high-profile cats. He and Stoneham in particular. Oh, gee. Taking his eye off of oh. Bacardi. That's an awful mistake. That's uh, not at AFL level. Christo's kick. A high one. Hinkley has to sit underneath it and he takes the mark. Short. Bearstow. He played in the State of Origin match in Adelaide, but uh, it's been suspended as he's kicked towards Ablett. Go oh, there, Hannah in the back, Ablett's free kick. Jeez. Well, Carlton have started this game as poorly as you could imagine. Yes, and that's, once again, poor discipline there from Mill Hannah. A talented player, should know better than that. 52 goals in six matches so far this year. Adver averaging 8.7 as he snuck it in. Another one. And the Ablett fairy tale continues here at the MCG. A ground where he just produces his very, very best. I think at the height of the best would be his nine goals won in a grand final. There's no question of that free kick. And this is Geelong's third goal in only, what is it, eight minutes from free kicks. Remarkable start to this game. Geelong lead by 25 points out of the middle hog towards half forward. Can they go beyond the centre square? Gleeson's got the ball. It's going to be a Carlton free. And it will come back. Fraser Brown's got it. And relays it back to Scholl. So, they attack belatedly. Kernahan slips away from Darcy. That's easy. And takes the mark inside the 50. Steve well, was just beginning to wonder whether he was going to get into this game. Getting a little bit chilly down there at full forward. Took so long to get the ball back to the kicker. That's unforgivable for Kernahan to drift away like that. Geelong ample time to fill the hole and also man up. Here's Kernahan from right on the 50. Long kick. Good looking effort. It's a beauty. Runs forward for a goal. Not a bad return. Good reply from Carlton and as always. The man of the moment, Stephen Kernahan, when they need a, fight, a person up forward to kick that important goal, he usually supplies the dividend. David Parkin, <laughs> look at that for a coach. Who would coach in this caper?
Back in the centre, Barnes and Madden, and again Carlton edge it over the centre line. Pickering caught by a couple of blues. Hocking tries to crash his way through. Brown puts a tackle on him. Scholl was in there, and it'll be a ball up. Williams on the bottom. And won't the Blues hope he has his hands around the footy a fair bit today? They can come back, but they've given Geelong an unnecessary start, it appears. Barnes goes, Madden, Brown, good tackle on him. Had the ball ripped away from him. Hip and shoulder on S. Hocking. Hogg tries to crash his way through. De Ulio gets a kick. Gleeson shoved out of it. But here's a chance for Sporting. Good take. But pressure put on him on Stoneham. Views, ducks, quite cleverly in a way. Unable to break through though. That quick handball out now. Here's a chance for Heaver. He's a bit of a sharpshooter. Jort to Sporting. McGrath, well played. Gleeson with a hip and shoulder. Sporting on him. Now Sporting goes for goal. Hooks it in the behind. Importantly, it appears that Carlton have responded to what was becoming a crisis for them. Sporting could have done better with that kick. Slewed off the boot. Wasn't under a great deal of pressure. Darcy, virtually straight down the middle from behind Scholl. Good judgment. He was outsized there. Overmatched but took the ball from inside the centre square. Alvin gets in behind the defence. Marks runs on his 10 metres out. Open goal. Puts it through. Carlton have kicked the last two. And a bit of confusion there in the Geelong defence. Tommy Alvin's man, McGrath, Tim McGrath, was 50 metres away. I think what happened was he perhaps changed men with Stephen Hocking. But Hocking just allowed him to slip away. And this is a gimme for Tommy. No pressure whatsoever. But Barnes could have just continued the chase there for a little longer. Carlton have gone halfway to turning this around in a hurry. They've kicked the last couple. Lead back to 12 points. Madden goes early against Barnes. De Olio gets a handball, but he's only hoping really. Hinkley, Williams won't run him down. Hinkley's left foot pass. Stretch Bairstow's hamstrings there and out of play. Merriman the job on Williams now. This is a Geelong skipper, Bairstow. Madden wrestling uh, with O'Reilly. Got his hand to it. Williams got a high tackle in the end. Heaver away with a bounce. A second one. Kernahan made the initial lead. He pops it up. Darcy versus Kernahan. Darcy shoves it away. Riccardi tries to break the Gleeson tackle. Hughes breaks the heaver tackle. Left foot a wobbly one, a difficult ball. Christo gets underneath it, takes the mark. Centre half back. Ratton running. Heaver all alone. Gee, there are some gaps. Gleeson all alone. Bradley's in the pocket. Gleeson centres it for Kernahan. Darcy with him. So's Hinkley. Fraser Brown did all right. Williams went to ground. No free kick paid. Trying to get rid of it, Merriman. Chris, uh, Alvin got a shove on the back, didn't get a free kick. And it'll be a bounce down at centre half forward. Good contest though. And Carlton is very competitive after a very slow start. Williams wanting a free kick and pointing to the other end. Saying Ablett got one. Or was it Couch? In fact, they both got one. There's Buse. Scrambles it forward towards centre half back. Alvin didn't have the ball. This is Steve Hocking in trouble. Eventually gets it away to McGrath. He's at right half back. Kicks it down towards half forward. O'Reilly does well. Body to body there with Dean. Simply too strong. O'Reilly inside the 50. Too much carry for Ablett. And over the top, Hannah did well. It was awkward because Ablett had stumbled underneath him. Hannah across the ground. Madden needs to mark it. Whoops. That's interesting, like a wicketkeeper trying to prevent buys there. Eventually he gives it to Hogg. Hogg swings it down the wing to Ulio. Clever mark. Takes it and runs on towards half forward. In from the side down there, Gleeson. It's getting a bit spirited behind the play. Meantime, Williams has it. Not a good kick, though. It comes to McGrath with plenty of time. Pickering up towards half back. Going wide is Hocking. Hocking meters in the clear. Needs to keep it in. Dean comes to him. Now O'Reilly is the target. Christo did well, sensing the danger, peeled off his man, got across to O'Reilly. 
because Dean was matching up initially with O'Reilly. So Christo showing good common sense there and some initiative. Thrown in about 70 metres from Geelong's attacking goal. Hawking against Madden. They wrestle and the umpire wants it. Madden and Brownless a moment ago and Bairstow spitting chips at Hocking because he was free when Hocking went for the slow ball down the side. Bairstow in the corridor and would have been able to attack. He wasn't happy. Madden wins it. Williams's work rate is lifted. Oh, got caught though. Scott's quick kick. Ablett's in the front spot. Hanner at the back. Ratton comes in from the side. Overrunning at Dean. Sexton got a high tackle from Brownless. No free kick. Heaver got rid of it in a hurry. Billy shrugs one off. He is a thumping kick. Goes to the square. Ablett sets himself almost a one-hander. No free kick pay. Hannah. Still Mill Hannah. Still Mill Hannah. They rip it off him. Ratton kicks it out of play. A great pressure from the Geelong attack there, but I couldn't believe that Ablett didn't get a free kick there. Have a look at Mill Hannah. If he's keeping his eye on the ball, well, I'll go he. Ratton tries to break it. Still no free kick. Hocking gets it out. Merriman got a high one, free kick to long. G Hocking. You can imagine what the Carlton supporters are thinking at the moment. I think importantly though, the free kicks have been there. Oh, that's right. And it is important to give the kicks, no matter what position on the ground there, they are given. So Hogg, the uh, infringer, the man giving it away, and he may have been responsible for that 50-metre penalty earlier. It was either he or Dulio. And also the one against Couch. Having a bad spell up there. Hocking from 35 metres with a drop point. It's a good kick. It's another one. Well, a good start to Gary Hocking to this game, a player who will be that far in front of Geelong's best and fairest at the moment. If it was counted now, it wouldn't be funny. Initially, he got the ball out of the centre on a couple of occasions, which resulted in Geelong goals, and now he gets one for himself. Dangerous player forward of the centre. The margin 18 points. Geelong have five goal scorers. There's the time remaining. Madden and Barnes. Barnes won it down. It deflects that of the Ulio, who's in trouble. Slung to the ground, holding the ball, the decision. Merriman takes the kick, goes down towards half forward, Geelong run hard, coming up to meet the ball, O'Reilly pulls it back across his body, it bounces down towards the pocket, Adler pops in front, over the top was Hannah, and the ball's gone out of bounds. It's a lively crowd, obviously trying to keep warm as much as anything else, still very cold, Geelong doing well out of the centre, and importantly they've got two of their very best sentiment outside the square, Couch and Bairstow, both on half forward flanks at the moment. There's Pickering, but Madden's going to get a free kick in the back pocket. Ironical cheers. Madden plays on. This is Hogg up from the back pocket. He boots it towards the wing. Taylor made for Barnes, though. Poor kick. Yes, poor delivery by Hogg. So Barnes has the ball right on the wing. Goes in short. Stoneham wants to play on. Hogg gets to him. Alters the kick. As a result, Gleeson gets an opportunity across half back and sends it back towards the middle. A oh, very clever Mark Merriman. Alongside the centre circle, goes out wide, Geelong behind the pack, Hocking favoured by the bounce. All the time in the world, 80 metres from goal, goes in short, intended for Ablett, gets by a one would-be tackler, still he goes right on the 50, pulls it back across his body, awkward half volley for Scott, taken by Bairstow, in the grasp, taken by Pickering to Tudor, 15 metres out, Lee Tudor I think has kicked it, he has... Geelong 6-1, Carlton 2-1. Well, Geelong just manufactured that goal out of sheer desperation. They've just got numbers at the football. Their forward line appears a little bit crowded. And perhaps that's not the way that Gary Ablett plays best. But their players are just forging the ball forward, having numbers at the football. So if they are under pressure, they've got a man to get it out to. And Lee Tudor gets a goal as a result. So the Cats have stretched the lead back out to four goals. Barnes wins the tap. Scholl overran it. Couldn't take it. Scott goes down. Free kick to Geelong. Bairstow or Scott take the pick. It might be Bairstow's. Once again, another centre bounce takeaway by Geelong. A real worry now for Carlton. Ablett makes the initial lead. Brownless in the square. Ablett! Oh! A 
Ah, Jim. Free kick. Well, love to have another look at that one. Gary can't believe it. Well, here's your look, Bruce. Well, looked like everybody was having a piece of the shepherding action there, but it was against that foot. I'll make a point about that in a second. Centre wing. De Olio, Hinkley, they run it out. I did a sportsman's night with Glenn James just before the State of Origin game, and he told me that they'd pinpointed Ablett to have a look at the tactics that he was using when the ball was coming down. And it doesn't surprise that the umpires have picked that one out and also a couple in the State of Origin game that just didn't look to be anywhere near it. Stephen Hocking, Fraser Brown. Well, Cat fans would be pretty pleased at the moment, but they'd be... Uh, Disappointed with that one. It looked to be a great mark under tremendous pressure. Yes, but the problem is that umpires cannot highlight one particular player. McKay to Ulio. Quick kick, Kernahan. Oh, great mark. Good forwards play in front, as do good backmen. Becomes a matter of judgment then, and Kernahan had the better. Darcy, of course, worrying about where Kernahan was. Kernahan was more interested in the football. Took a chest mark low down, a tough one. Did it well. And the captain needs to kick this, and he's missed it badly. <laughs> Everyone's against them. That seemed to be a definite point from our vantage point but still out of bounds on the full was the decision Christo takes the mark on the other side Carlton will bring it back in 6-1 plays 2-1 so the Cats have started superbly Christo down towards the kickoff line Kernahan surrounded just getting a timely hand in there with Stone and that's holding the ball on Brown surely and Hocking will get the free kick in the back pocket Matthew Hogg's come off the ground for Carlton Paul McCormack on for his first run been going out to pick up Pickering. McGrath chips it to Pickering. And he did well because he knew he was loose with Carlton doing the interchange. And he's pushed over 110 metres, 120 odd metres to create a loose band. Whoa, Bradley! What a mark! <laughs> to Gleeson. Gleeson inside the 50, Kernahan couldn't hang on, it falls behind, Hughes puts it in reverse, gets away to Hocking, to Hinkley, who runs across half back, Hinkley through centre wing, it'll bounce down towards half forward, well taken on the burst by Alvin, chips it back towards Brown, round forward of the wing, gets it to De Ulio. De Ulio, a hand pass to Madden, the big man, nimble as you'd like, kicks it inside the 50, Bradley, the hand pass not good, Bearstow intercepted, Feeds it back about 15 metres and Sol Buse into trouble. Strong tackle, Kernahan. Loose ball, McKay did well. Desperation, McKay could have almost got a kick. And the umpire says no. Williams having a lot to say again. But a bounce, about 40 metres out from goal. Greg not happy. Blues desperately needing a goal. At centre half forward, Barnes tries to get a run at it. Stoneham crashes through. McKay stood his ground. Took it off to Ulio. Stoneham thumps it away. Brown had to sit and wait. Quick kick, McGrath should take it, he does. Kernahan couldn't quite get into the action. So many of Carlton's kicks are just like that from Brown, just mongrels around the corner due to the pressure of Geelong, and that's why they're getting the ball away from their back line so easily. McGrath was to Darcy, being hurled onto uh, the blue player, no free kick. Bradley, who took a spectacular mark moments ago. Still Bradley, Scott working with him. They'll take it away from Bradley. Pickering to Scott, the racehorse is away with a bounce and again. And good pressure though by the Blues, by McCormack, was just close enough to make Scott think about it. Carlton swung a change onto the dangerous Gary Hocking, Tom Elvin, a noted tagger in, in the game, then moved on to him. Madden, got it back, went nowhere with it, Couch to Bearstow, alongside the boundary line. Sexton in from the side, should have taken the mark, there's a whistle, and it will be a free kick to Ablett this time. Held on to. Here we see off the ball, Milan Hanna playing a wrestle hold, I'd imagine you'd call that. 
wasn't necessary because Sexton did the right thing coming over to lend support. He was always going to take the football away. Now Ablett lines up for a second. From 30 metres out, looks pretty good. It's a goal. Ablett has two and Geelong had seven. And we'll just have a look at the way that Sexton runs across. Leaves his man Brownless, does it very well. He was always going to get that football. Hannah must just play in front. Can't retard a man like that. Seven goals to the Cats and five of them directly from free kicks. I'm sure it's a statistic that David Parker will be very well aware of. Seven to two. Kicked the first four goals, Geelong. Carlton didn't get it past the centre line for about ten minutes. Came back with two of their own, and now Geelong are away again. Madden and Barnes. Madden got his hand to it. It was tapped forward by Gleeson. De Ulio gave up some ground. Shoal was impeded. Free kick. Thirteen free kicks to five in Geelong's favour. Shoal from the centre square. Kernahan, Darcy. Oh, Kernahan went early. Surely a free kick. Darcy's got it. Tries to pinpoint Stoneham. Brown's got a drop on him, but Stoneham's got a lot of class and had a height reach. McGrath was going to give it off to Stephen Hocking. Decided that the handball wouldn't have quite reached him. Left foot by McGrath. Christo jumped early. Wind playing havoc a bit with some of the kicking. Dean, well done. Christo in trouble, no support by McKay, ran off him and made, to, well he's got a free kick, Geelong then had the number, so Christo from half back. Told to play on now, don't know why, kicks through the wing towards half forward, Madden goes back, Barnes over the top, it was Barnes who prevailed, he thumped it about 15 metres, it'll be tossed in on the other side. Yes, and we've just got a message down from Ross Glendening on the boundary line who informs us that the wind is really swirling around out there. Conditions very difficult for the players. Bitterly cold, difficult for the spectators too. As Buse boots it around the outer side. Good mark by Madden. It's just forward of the wing. 7-1 plays 2-1. Geelong in control. Buse hanging back across half back to good effect. Now he plays on. Some indecision from Buse. He's on the defensive 50. Well, that fooled everybody. He goes towards the outer side. Bradley plays on. Bradley forward of the wing. Back inside the 50. Miscued, though. Buse tackled by Spaulding. Holding the ball, said the umpire. Spaulding will shoot on goal from about 40 out. And here we see on replay this infringement. Not sure if uh, Buse had much opportunity of getting rid of that football. However, it now comes to Spalding to see if he can even up the ledger somewhat. Kicking a goal from a free kick, and his task will be to work out which way the wind's blowing. The swirling breeze may help him. He's done a master of kicking goals. He puts it straight through the middle. Good kick. Carlton needed that one, their third. Yes, it's such a difficult uh, skill here at the MCG, kicking for goal. When the wind is swirling like this, you can kick it to the left goal post once and it'll blow right. You do the same thing five seconds later and it will blow left. It can be blowing into your wind, into your face, facing the goals at one minute, and then it'll be right up your ginger the next. Sounds almost all right. Seven to three. That was better than all right, Sporting getting that goal. From the centre, Bradley tried to take it away. Merriman ripped it off him. O'Reilly leads Dean for it. A difficult one to get down to for the big man. Got a good bounce in the end. Dean harassed him, though, and ran it out of play. A good effort. The runner is out talking to Andrew Buse, perhaps about his uh, infringement not so long ago. Madden. McKay went without it. He's had a slow start. Hocking there. So Geelong are four goals in front in a 
crucial match for both teams. Out of the six, both of them underachievers at the halfway point of this uh, season. Hocking again, he's playing some match to Couch. McKay's got the job on him. Centre half forward, Scholl versus Scott. Tudor. Williams free kick. That will make Greg very happy. Fullback Williams, he's going to kick to Alvin, and they've got some numbers here, so he gets to Scholl. Hannah's going to provide a bit of run. Scholl goes short. Heaver, who loves to run. Ablett and Sexton behind it. Kernahan caught underneath it, Spalding. Does he get a good bounce? Big Earl. Bang, another one. And the Blues have bounced back. Very good timing by Sporting, a couple of goals as Buse does go off and coming on Malakalis. Yes, an important goal though just before quarter time. Incredible kicking from both sides, only two points between the two. 11 goals of course, so it's been a very attacking game of football today. Both these sides have posted some big scores this season. Defence has been their problem. Pickering. Grabbed by Alvin and the bounce. I think that was a conscious decision by Malcolm Blight, though, Dennis, just to go all out attack after a fairly ordinary start to the season. A team meeting was held and they all decided that perhaps the best way they played was when they attacked the football. One of the crowd pleases. Brown's got the free kick. Kicks inside the 50. Kernahan up he goes with Darcy off hands to Williams. Williams forced to come back. The hand pass a little untidy. McCormack has it now. 45 metres from goal. The kick, I think, was touched off the boot. They contest on the kickoff line. Hinkley had it, then lost it. Malakellis fell on top of Hinkley and the ball. And the bounce. The Julio pleads his case. Well, the umpires are getting plenty of help this afternoon. The players and the crowd. The siren for quarter time. Entertaining affair, that one. Geelong jumped well, Carlton then matched them, but the margin is three goals, 7-1 to 4-1 at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Well, the sun continues to shine, Grant Vernon's got the football, Geelong have got the lead. Going to hand one out in the square, five other players for Carlton across half forward. Start of the second term, Barnes and Madden, well taken away by Hocking, who kicks it out wide. O'Reilly leads in the race close to the boundary line, tries to slap it down towards the pocket. Cannon's into the fence, and the ball is out of bounds and will be thrown in just inside the attacking 50. So O'Reilly starting on the forward line today. And it's been busy. Now does the ruck work. Held Madden's arm, couch over the ball, gets a hand pass away, very slick. Down goes Pickering, didn't have it, should have got a free kick. This is couch, about 60 metres from goal, the hand pass. Well, he found Bairstow, but Bairstow was in trouble. Dean crashes in there. His boot hit the ball, an involuntary action. Gleeson got it to Williams. Barnes, oh, good man, a full stretch. Barnes down towards right half forward. Centering kick. Ablett. Madden was in the front spot. Now Hannah, quick kick away. Williams takes the mark in front of Merriman. The sun's shining here. We've been told that incredible hailstorm at Waverley Park. We might be able to see some of that later in the telecast. The kick away towards centre wing. Hinkley. Centering kick. Carlton with numbers, but uh, Geelong did pretty well. Trying to break through was Pickering. Alvin was there. Pickering gets a second crack at it. The handball was good. Scott's handball to Hocking, who's been magnificent. To O'Reilly, who could kick a goal on his left foot. Misses badly in the end. Sneaking in from behind. A good build-up by the Cats, so they turned it round in the centre square. Gary Hocking part of the action again. And O'Reilly up forward today and useful. Hannah and Ablett, look at the huddle. Sexton provides an opportunity. Brownless with him. They picked out a free kick from that huddle. One of the Geelong players was infringing against a Carlton player who was trying to burst into open space, and Brett Ratton will come up with a free kick. Now gives it off to Dean. Dean running from centre half back. Drop punt to half forward. Heaver caught underneath it. Malakalis. Hinkley's quick kick away. Centre wing. Bouncing ball out of play. Ken Hinkley. 
couple of important possessions early in this second quarter. Has matched up Delulio well for pace. Turned it over there nicely not so long ago. Player that is very important to Geelong. Madden took it out of the uh, from the boundary throw and then a little kick about 30 metres along the ground and out of play. So they do battle again with the Blues trailing at 4-1 to 7-2. Madden, very concerned about where Barnes is. Well, that's innovative. Hinkley's got it. Malakellis now towards the wing. Christo worked out of it well by Bairstow. It falls behind Couch with a runner outside. He releases Hocking, who kicks inside the 50. Ablett on the lead. Almost the mark. Plans the call. Ablett crawled after that one. Hanarat crawled him. On his knees, he gets it across to Alvin. Now Gleeson. Back it comes into the path of Alvin. Reading it well was Pickering. Not a particularly good kick. Gained about 15 metres. Wanting it most was Scott. Good mark to Stoneham. Stoneham inside the 50. Well and truly. Brown has got a hand to it. Sexton runs off him though. Kicks for space to Ulio on the outer side. How will it bounce? He's outnumbered. Big test for him. Diulio passed the test with flying colours. Should have got a free. Nothing doing. Comes to Hocking. Hocking goes down towards the pocket and Brownless. Too much carry. Brownless didn't read it well in flight. The ball's gone off his hands, out of bounds in the pocket. Well, Ronda Ulio, I think, deserved a free on the outer side. It wasn't forthcoming. And again, that uh, swirling breeze that Ross told us about may have been a factor there with Brownless. Madden a good tap to Ratton. Ratton's quick kick holding up. Williams was committed for it. Scholl tries to break a tackle. The handball, Bradley, clever. Williams repays Bradley. He had to stretch though, Bradley. He's still got a chance. Back to Williams. The two playmakers for the Blues work at the centre wing. There's a free kick back here and it's going back to Bra uh, Bradley off the footy. Three Foss Williams medals for best for South Australia in state of origin footy took a terrific mark earlier in this match his first touch of the ball today now Dean Kernahan had to go very early was outnumbered Malakalis running it towards the boundary line and out of play Carlton an attack though Malakalis coming on for views late in the first term Kernahan works his way to the front comes off his shoulder Cormac trying to get through. Gary Hawkins had eight kicks and three handballs. He's played a terrific game and he finds Bairstow at half back. Mark Bairstow, the 86 Sandover medalist. Long kick towards the wing. O'Reilly in front, it falls forward. Christo's got it. Comes Carlton back into attack. Barnes in from the side. Good effort. Eyes only for the ball. He plays on. Releases Darcy. He runs it across the goal face, has a second bounce. Now he settles at right half back and swings it wide. Riccardi, haven't seen a lot of him this afternoon, keeps it in, nicely done. Hinkley, surrounded, in trouble, shrugs a tackle, falling to the ground, finds Riccardi on the overlap. Riccardi cuts through them, goes in short. Ablett, again he didn't hang on. Brownless, back to goal, right on the 50. Brownless, centering kick and a beauty, Scott. Yeah, great vision there from Bill Brownless. Wasn't a great kick of sorts, but it certainly made it found its mark. A floater, but Scott was up to the task, took a good mark. The good running there from Riccardi. It's a pretty good battle on the wing between Bradley and Riccardi. As Dennis said, Riccardi a little bit quiet, but two very vital possessions in that passage of play. Robert Scott directly in front, 35 metres out. Post another goal. 8-2-4-1. Yes, a confidence lifter for Billy Brownless. He's been out of sorts a couple of times this season. He's working hard and an integral player in this attack. It's interesting the combinations of uh, forward structure of both sides. Carlton electing to have Kernahan the only man in the 50-metre zone, where Geelong are playing three guns right up in the square. Double the score at the MCG. Oh, Madden should have uh, just grabbed hold of that one. McCormack gets it though for the Blues. He's kicked towards centre half forward. See this open space we're talking about. Bradley, clever. Very good by Bradley. 
Bouncing, unlucky. Blacksburg. Spalding shouldn't have missed it. Free kick, no, not paid. Heaver went in hard. Stoneman played it magnificently. Well done, Barry. But De Julio takes the mark. Well, it'll be an anti-climax if De Julio kicks his goal because what a sensational performance by big Barry Stoneman. It should have been a goal. I'm not sure how Earl Spalding contrived to miss that one. However, he did, and if it wasn't for Stoneman's magnificent chase, he would have been able to go back with a second effort and kick it. However, now it's up to De Lulio to make amends. From 30 metres out, the low kick is a straight one as a goal. Well, the Blues are hanging in here. Sporting wonders about what happened to that third goal, but uh, Carlton is still very much part of the action. Look at this one. Well, it might have been the backspin, of course, Bruce. Bradley did weight it magnificently. It was almost the alley-oop move in football. Bradley just dropped it there for Spalding to soccer it through. But Earl, you're going to have to practice those ones. Madden gets set, so does Barnes. This is an important period now in the match. At 8-2 to 5-1, the Blues have hung on. They've got to make some inroads. Madden went very early. Barnes won it clearly. Geelong has been supreme in the centre square. Here's Pickering's kick the full forward. Ablett in the front spot. Hannah, who's had a very good term on Ablett, runs it to the boundary line. The left-hand handball, McKay attacks it. Couch clever off the ground. Shoal attacks it. Oh, he gets swapped. Ablett came from nowhere and ripped it away from him. Scott's got the chance. Pressure's immense. Ratton runs into him, gets him. Play on call. Some great tackling going on. The handball out to Brownless to Scott. Another one misses a behind. Oh, it's exciting. What about Ablett? He charged from nowhere to run that blue down. Yes, great defensive work from Gary Ablett. Not noted for that area. But when it hits a man, it's like the Southern Aurora coming, charging through. Such a strong player. But I have noticed with them playing Bill Brownless alongside Gary Ablett, Sexton has been able to come across and give Mill Hanna a hand, punching the ball from Ablett. So perhaps they may move big Bill Brownless just a little bit further out into the pocket to separate the two Carlton defenders. Williams working off Madden there. Hanna's original kick. Williams centering handball. Heaver with some pace awkward looking kick Bradley it bounces for him still Bradley goes for goal it sits up it's still sitting up from the side of sporting well played Stoneham he's been a master in two big plays away to Hinkley and the cool cat makes a mistake Gleason to Ulio great tackle Malakalis Fortunately for Ken Hinckley, Malakalis did uh, affect that tackle. Players bouncing with the football looks great, but unfortunately often it just puts players up the field out of position. And that's one of Ken Hinckley's big problems, I believe. He does tend to take that extra bounce. Well, he got a free kick. He drives it around the outer side. Christo leads back in the race. Couch, the bit of composure. Pickering across the boundary line with the footy. I think an important move for Carlton is that they've moved Bradley off the wing and into the center of the ground, picking up Gary Hocking, at least one on one. Tom Elvin has gone over onto Riccardi. Madden, clean possession. Scholl going nowhere. We've got a whistle. Merriman boots it forward, but it's coming back, and a free kick will be taken by Brett Scholl. So Carlton have weathered something of a storm, really. Geelong started so well, getting the first four goals, but since then, Carlton have more than matched them. 8-3 to 5-1, Scholl goes for distance around the outer side. Bairstow and Williams, Barnes, tailor-made for him with the fly over the top of the pair. Plays on, close to the boundary line, boots it back towards half Riley O'Reilly up in front, a bit of judgment shown behind by Dean, who plays on to Ratton, to Scholl, who runs up to half-back, confronted, gets by his opponent, though, and kicks down towards the half-forward line. In front was Spalding, it falls to Bradley, who falls. Down went Williams. Heaver over the ball now. Scott's got him. Heaver slaps it out. Well played. McGrath, though, on his own half-back line. He's a player of great quality as McGrath drives it through the middle. It bounces about 60 metres out. Dean, desperate stuff, gets it to Alvin. To McCormack, to Ratton, to Bradley. Now something is happening. Heaver. Kernahan's the target. Still with Kernahan. Williams clever, 
Left foot by Williams, bringing it back, missing it. But some very good work by the Blues. It was an excellent build-up. Once again, it was Bradley at the fall of the ball in the middle of the ground to get that one going. And it, it is a good move because Bradley won out without a stopper. is as good a player as going around at the present time. So Carlton will at least equalise Gary Hocking's contribution for Geelong and perhaps even turn it round with, with uh, Bradley coming out on top. Heavick, short, does it get to Fraser Brown? Not quite. Geelong with some numbers. Darcy to Bairstow, had a quiet one so far. Squeezes it out cleverly to McGrath at halfback. Back to Bairstow running for him. Bairstow's centering kick is a good one. Couch gets a good bounce. Couch's handball was excellent for Scott. Brownless makes the initial lead. Ablett's one out. Scott's kick is a nothing one. Sexton goes with Brownless. Waiting behind was Tudor. The handball goes back to Scott. Here's Ablett with a run. Does he interfere? He does. It's a free kick for the Blues. Crashing into the back. Of Dean. And here's the push in the back from Ablett. And also the big leap from Mill Hanna. I thought Robert Scott made a bit of a blue coming through the centre of the ground when he elected to push over onto his left foot. And as Bruce said, it was a nothing kick. Should go onto your preferred option if possible. And that would have been down the corridor. Christo's handball, he got it back fortunately for Carlton and then gets some distance, Stoneham running against it with Spalding. That's been a good duel. Stoneham's free kick. And Hannah, who's been in the hands of the trainer and hopefully for Carlton, he's all right. He's now... A bit of air sickness, I think, Bruce. Yes, he was up very high, wasn't he? There's Stoneham. Stoneham from half-back. Ablett's run away, run, run away from Hannah on the outer side, actually, which was smart thinking. Alvin over the ball. He's tackled by Ablett. As I say, he's come up into the play. And Hannah gingerly trotting after him. So bounce midway between centre wing and left half forward. Barnes disposed of. McKay heads for the boundary but left the ball behind. Bairstow tries to get the hand pass across to Riccardi. Alvin somehow managed to get a boot on that one. Kick comes across from Steve Hocking, floating it towards the 50. Almost a great mark by O'Reilly, not paid. Dean to Hannah. This is Heaver. He's been busy in the last five minutes. Kicks inside the attacking 50. Kernahan forced to spoil from behind. Still they go. Williams somehow got through. Williams 30 metres out, sprays it. He's missed by a long way. Yes, he tried to bend the ball around. He had time. He could have straightened up his elite. He is a lethal kick when he has time to drop the ball normally for a drop punt. Williams on his left. But that one, he tried to swing it round Arla Malcolm Blight and didn't quite get the connection that he needed. Hinkley straight down the centre. Kernahan set himself for it. Williams just dropped it. He was a bit lucky, I think, Greg. McKay, run down. Free kick, though. Blue free kick. Good decision by the umpire, though. He was behind Greg Williams, couldn't quite see how he disposed of the ball. And rather than taking a guess, he called play on. McKay, Brown was his target, or was it Kernahan? But it's going to be Brown with a chance. Shoals inside. Brown centering kick. Spalding and Stoneham. Barnes at the back. Malakalis sweeps for him. Steadies. And then relaxes and kicks it as far as he can. Christo versus Riccardi. Riccardi got it. McCormack took it off him. McCormack's handball to Madden. Madden did all right, the big fella. Oh. Well played by Heaver. A chance for Alvin to Gleeson. Kick a goal, Gleeson. They deserve it. Goes for it. And the Blues have got it. Oh, that was hard off the at centre half forward. Yes, it was a pretty solid bump to say the least, Bruce. Poetic justice that Carlton should score a goal there. Gary Ablett was the man in question. Let's just see what happens here. Down he goes. That being Brent Heaver. Ablett coming up onto the, into the centre of the ground for a run. Well, Heaver's OK. He's on his feet after that collision with Ablett. And two of the superstars of the league, Ablett and Williams, got involved after Heaver went down. Crashing through McGrath. Bradley's hand pass not particularly good. Merriman tried to go off the ground. Opportunity for Scott now. Surrounded and in trouble. Williams has got it. Bounces off one. Goes again. Was hacked down by Hocking. 
and Williams will get the free. Ablett on hand. Williams alongside the center circle. 8 3 6 3. Two teams playing for their season in some respects, and it's showing. Madden up in front. Brown lost it. Sliding in there with Scott. Barnes is over the ball to Hinckley. They need to keep their head now in more ways than one. Miller Kellis got it away to Riccardi. Across it comes to Hocking. He goes down towards half forward. Dean over the top. Crashing through his Ratten. Loose ball in front. Shooter didn't have it. McKay went against the flow. Crashing in McGrath. Taken by McCormack. Smothered off the boot O'Reilly. Sliding in there was Williams at the oblique angle. It's knocked out by Merriman. Taken by Couch. Now McGrath. McGrath 60 metres out. Unloads. It's a long bomb. It bounces through. Now it's coming back after all of that. It was a Carlton free kick, kick back across their half-back line. And McGrath had stormed on oblivious to that. And it kicked a very long goal. So Carlton getting a break here. Gleeson's kick to centre wing. Sporting and Stone in the last three or four minutes has been as hard and as tough as you could ever see. Barnes's kick to centre wing to O'Reilly. To McGrath. Goes on the couch. It's a poor kick. Tim McGrath is making a habit of doing that. He did it a couple of times against Essendon when the ball came straight back to Salmon and he kicked goals. It's just unforgivable, those mistakes from a player who won, was second in their best and fairest last year. Costly mistake. Scott off and Simpson on for Geelong. Christo's kick, centre wing. Madden at the back, Barnes. McKay hip and shoulder with uh, Bairstow out of play. She didn't Greg Williams play two or three great minutes there when it was hard and tough. Yes, good player, as is Andrew McKay proving to be. Played every game this season, had some big jobs on players. Played well in the State of Origin series. He's really making a name for himself. 8-3-6-3. Three, three. Carlton challenging. Geelong holding on. Brown coming off the ground with a bloody nose. And Oliver on for his first run for the year. Quick kick by Merriman. Uh, no, no, by Pickering. He kept it in. It was a good kick in the end. Dean is happy. Ablett running in. And out of play. Interesting change. Brown a runner for Oliver. A tall, timbered type player. I think the umpire actually told Brown to go off the ground. He was bleeding from the nose. I haven't seen that before. I mean, I've seen them bleed from the nose before, but not get told to go off the ground as Dean runs it across the line. It's a torrid game at the present time. But that's caused a change for Geelong. McGrath's going up to pick up Oliver. Stephen Hocking has got McCormack. 8 4 6 3. This is Gleason, right half back. And the bright sunshine, but that belies the temperature. It's still bitterly cold around the outer side. Off hands, loose ball towards the boundary. And we'll have a throw in. So Carlton really have stuck at it. Oh. Ross Glendinning down on the boundary has let us know that in fact Grant Vernon did tell Fraser Brown to leave the ground and receive attention meantime McGrath in front of Williams Williams right, played it Steve. very well kicks it inside the 50 how will it bounce to the advantage of Kernahan and or Spaulding Carlton have the numbers around the ball but nothing doing Darcy content to push it back across that boundary line and it will be thrown in. Meantime, Fraser, Fraser Brown still has his problems. Barnes and uh, Spalding and again out of play. Half forward right, the Blues attacking, trailing by 13 points in the big match of the Melbourne cricket ground. Gleeson couldn't quite do it. Spalding fell over. But got a bit of time here to measure a handball. McCormack caught by Bairstow. I think Carlton fans thought the initial tackle might have been a fraction high, but he did have his chance. And Bairstow from half back. He might have just too touched the football there. Just a little fumble. And that's the difference between VFA football, where he came from, and playing at the top level. No chance. No second grabs allowed. O'Reilly. Kernahan will up the ground, Darcy to try and exploit some uh, pace here. But we'll play Kernahan. So 
So the Cats now in attack. Madden O'Reilly, McKay. O'Reilly with it. Madden still in play. Couch gets hold of him. Simpson comes in rather ruggedly. And just make sure that Madden stays on the ground for a little longer. And it'll be a bounce. Another change for the Blues. Heaver off and Hogg back on. He must have been itching to get back on Hogg after making a few errors in the first term. Free kick wise. Dean, McKay. Well, a bit stiff, but uh, he's a bit lucky that the Dean punch went straight into the lap and then under some pressure he booted it out of play. Stephen Hocking to bring it back in from centre wing. Margin 13 points. Here's Hocking. Going down towards half forward with the kick. Off hands, it falls to Gleeson. Going nowhere. Couch now, the hurried kick inside the attacking 50. It sits up awkwardly for Ablett. Well played by Hannah. Got it forward to Dean, who hand passes to Gleeson, who showed great courage to go in there. Down went Riccardi. It comes to Hocking. Gleeson got into his back. Hocking rakes it in again. Couch dives on top of it. And it will be a ball up. So it's very, very willing at the present time. The margin was 18 points at quarter time. The Cats led. So the Blues have got closer after a very sluggish start. 8-4, 6-3. That's the time till half time. Madden and O'Reilly body to body. Over the top. Fisted down there by McKay. Simpson's kick almost marked by Ablett. Pickering didn't have it. Besto working hard on his knees, threw it out surely, no free kick, scramble forward by Hocking, back comes Pickering, Christo didn't have it, in there is Riccardi, he's slung, now an opportunity for Merriman, Merriman about 30 metres from goal, concedes some ground, gives it back to Simpson, shocking kick, Tudor goes in, pushed off it, taken by Scholl, and now Christo, in space, drives around the outer side, one out contest, Hogg did well to stand his ground, hacks it out of mid-air, Kernahan, lunging mark, Kernahan right half forward, well, hard work alone, won that ball forward, Spalding comes on the lead, ill-directed kick, Hinkley got a hand to it, this is Stoneham, Spalding did well, knocked the ball down, taken by Hogg who couldn't control it, Gleeson was tackled high, and he'll get the free kick. Now got Stephen Oliver down in the forward pocket, Kernahan has come out to centre half forward, Spalding at full forward. Those three are just running a merry-go-round, trying to upset the Geelong pattern. Gleeson will kick from about uh, 45 metres. Gives it his best shot. That's a great kick. Gleeson with a couple of second quarter goals. And Carlton climbing back in at 7-3 to 8-4. Here we see the free hog failing to make contact. Gleeson coming up underneath Malakalis' arm. And kicks it pretty well from inside the 50. But of course the biggest problem today, not yardage, but the swirling wind. The Blues have kicked five of the last six goals in this match. Bradley's been important to centre half forward. A bouncing ball. Stoneham well played. Very well played. Malakalis twists, turns, changes direction with all that to McGrath. Under pressure, out on the full. Oliver put the pressure on, and for the second time, McGrath has kicked it out on the full. Show from the 50 metre line. The Blues have got the Cats on the ropes for the moment. They're trailing on the board, but they've got the momentum. Scholl, centering kick, not a bad one. Madden stretches high. Barnes falls over and then pushes it out of bounds. Yes, I'm just having a look at Tim McGrath. He's got his hands and his hips and his head down. Certainly something he has to look at. He gets pushed over sideways, running sideways, and that football just too often is going out of bounds. Have to have a look at that because this is the game, the ground that the finals have played. Darcy squares it to Stoneham. Mr. Call, isn't he? This man. 
Good stretch there by uh, Pickering. Short McGrath. Well done, McCormack. Well, I'm hitting him to Clans there, and Paul McCormack did very well to knock that one away. So we've got a boundary throw in. A minute 30 remaining till half time. Madden, wide of the pack. Hocking can't pick it up. Williams almost had him. Well played by Steve Hocking. Comes away from the wing. He boots it down towards the attacking 50. Dean flies from behind. Thumps it forward. This is Bearstow. Bearstow between the lines. Really said O'Reilly a task there. He's outnumbered. Gleason paddles it towards the boundary. He's been good in this turn. And again, that was clever. Under real pressure, got the kick off to Dean. Two veterans combining. Dean goes to the wing. McCormack drops the mark, I think troubled by the sun. Scholl takes a long time, gets the kick off in the grass. Up in front, Spaulding couldn't hang on. This is Oliver. Back towards Spaulding on his knees, up to Oliver. Free kick is coming back to Spaulding for a push in the back. And I think that's a fair enough decision. Hard to pay the advantage at this sort of tempo. You're asking a lot of the umpires. Spaulding plays on. Hoists it very high. They'll contest about 30 metres out. Kernahan. The mark to stand. Bradley's run on and kicked the goal, but the ball will come back to Kernahan directly in front, only about 30 metres out. As a Barnes can't believe that he didn't get awarded this mark. He's in the front spot. Look to have first purchase, or perhaps equivalent purchase with Kernahan, but Kernahan's strength just wrenched the ball out. He comes up with a mark. So good in the air, Stephen Kernahan. He's directly in front. The margin currently is seven points. Important kick. Not a good effort. He's missed to the right. So the margin is six points. Eight four plays seven four. And there's the halftime siren. Kernahan looks ruefully at the scoreboard. That was a golden opportunity for the Blues to get closer. Four. Lots to play for. The start of the second half at the MCG. Up goes Madden Fists away, taken by Hinkley. He puts it down towards centre half forward. Drifting kick, that swirling breeze, making it awkward. McKay overran it. Hawking was held without it. He'll get the free kick. He certainly showed it to advantage. He was grabbed by the arm, he wants to play on, goes in short, and Stoneham has marked it directly in front, about 35 metres out. Well, the game started with Geelong launching attack after attack. They kicked the first four goals, and again here. The Geelong have already made a quick change. They brought Denham back onto the ground and replaced O'Reilly, a big player. An early raid by the Cats. Looks successful. It is. Smiles all round. 9-4 plays 7-4. Yeah, of course, that was Sean Simpson coming back onto the ground, not Denner. And there's a big goal from big Barry Stoneham, who's been moved to centre-half forward. Good start to Geelong. Stoneham's early goal, and the Cats stretch it out to two goals. Dean got on top of O'Reilly in that second quarter, so Stoneham there now. Madden didn't go anywhere. Shaw was unable to take it out of the ground. McCormack's kick went to a very few metres. Couch's kick the centre half for Christo went early. Did it Dean. well. Riccardi. Brownless shrugs a tackle off. Centres the ball with a beautiful kick to Stoneham. Plays on, still Barry Stoneham, onto his left foot, centering kick to the goal square, Ablett and Hannah, Scott, a goal, Geelong a three in front. Well, they've jumped them again, Carlton have come out cold, it's 10-7. to seven. Yes, and a vital start once again to Geelong. Stoneham. Probably shouldn't have played on, could have gone back and launched one deep into attack. Ablett gets the ball to the ground, and Scott finishes off with an opportunistic goal. 
Once again, that errant hand from Hannah. You have to be careful that it will attract another free kick against. David Parkin looking concerned, as you'd expect. Very much the season on the line here. Bearstow, his 15th possession, boots it out wide. McKay, such a good player for South Australia in state of origin, swings it around the outer side. Hogg comes to mid it, full chested, did brilliantly. A deft deflection to Scholl, goes back to Hogg, who boots it around the outer side, Spalding at full stretch. Marks close to the boundary line. Such an important term, this one. Spalding, probing kick, Kernahan, fisted away by Darcy. De Ulio snaps, looks good. His second, 8-4, 10-4. And that's the Derlio's great strength when he hits the base of the packs, gets to the work face, running flat out. There you see him coming off screen, bang. Hits that, gets the ball quickly to boot. A terrific goal under enormous pressure. Back to 12 points to Ulio's second goal. Couch got rid of it in a hurry. Hinkley's handball straight up on the air. Carlton had some numbers. McCormack's kick towards half forward. Views went to ground. Kernahan, well played to hold. Can he get a foot to it? Oh, well done, Couch. Simpson shrugged off Williams, kicks it out to the space. McCormack and Malakalison out of play. Williams has his third opponent, Stephen Hocking. Feeling he may have lined up on him initially. Hocking a very good negative type player. Merriman did quite well on him in the first quarter on Williams, but uh, Williams got away in the second. Speak of the man, trying to burst his way through. Scott's there. Fraser Brown puts a tackle on him. And again, it's going to be a bounce down. Another important move for Geelong is they've put both of their main architects, centre bounce architects, in the middle. Bairstow and Couch both played on the half forward flanks in the first half. And it'll be interesting to see how if they can deliver the goods. Madden's little one. De Ulio runs onto it. Finds some space with pace. Left foot kick to Kernahan. No free kick. Kernahan's looking for one. Darcy looks for one. Malakalis caught. Tommy Alvin's left foot. It's out of play. Kick Carlton's first goal from memory. Or second. When he ran in and goal. Alvin. Now Kernahan. And Barnes. Barnes at the back. Well done. McCormack with a bit of strength. Williams. Well, it looked like he might have been legged, but uh, no free kick. Mallet Callis froze in the end, and it's out of play. Doesn't seem to be too worried about McCormack, who's uh, contested pretty well. Barnes and Kernahan. Back to Barnes. This is Bearstow hard against the boundary line. Pulls it around the other side wing. Couch. Good judgment. Timed his run well. Plays on from half back. Swings it back to the middle. Gary Hocking. Plays on. Goes down towards centre half forward. Strong mark in front held by Pickering. Crown 150. It wasn't there, but it was a good mark. Now 50 could be there. No. Just clumsy, thinks the umpire. Pickering. Kicks down towards the kickoff line. Big pack at the fall of the ball. Off hands and through for a minor score. Billy Brownless. 10-5, 8-4. Just under 20 minutes till three-quarter time. Christo breaks away. Dean chips it meantime to Gleeson. He's held up by Ablett. Gleeson up from the back pocket. Proceeds around the outer side with a high kick towards the wing. Madden used his body well, claimed the mark. Releases McKay. This is Brown. To Alvin. Inside to McKay. From 50, the drop punt. A chance, a goal! Stirring stuff that. A run from halfback and ran it all the way up and kicked the goal to put the Blues within seven points. Yes, and, Matt, and McKay's man, Gary Hogging, more than half the ground away now, sitting on the half-forward flank there for Geelong. Great running from a player who has been a real find for Carl, giving him some run in one of their weakest departments. The 
the Blues have shown plenty of fight here today. They're right back in this ball game again. Madden all over the top of Barnes. Bradley didn't take a clean possession. Gleeson got it to him. Well, Craig can kick a goal. Drop punt. Go. Run it through. A beauty. Oh, that makes the hair stand on the back of the neck. Point the difference yeah. at the G. Two great running goals to come in a matter of a minute. Really showing that they aren't going to lie down and let Geelong run the show. Geelong, of course, are trying to make this a, an open affair, having players running willy nilly. Carlton trying to close it up and then break away and let their runners, for example, Bradley, kick some big goals like that one. Well, it's the story of the day. Geelong skip away, Carlton come back. Can they go on from here? Bradley is inspired himself. He thumped it down towards half forward, spoiled into Williams. Williams from the 50, kicks it down towards the pocket, Kernahan. So a chance for the Blues to lead for the first time today. Now he goes in short. Alvin forced to give it back to Kernahan. Very sharp angle, this. Perhaps we're about to see a check side from Steve Kernahan. His seventh season as skipper, three times best and fairest. An outstanding player. Tries it and succeeds in levelling the scores. 65 apiece. It's a great pass from Greg Williams who wanted it beautifully on the left. Could have perhaps blazed away a goal, but saw Kernahan was on the left-hand side of his player and just poked it into space, allowing Kernahan to run on. Probably should have goaled there from Banana Alley. Darcy got great distance. Madden. Back to Bradley. High one. Kernahan caught under, out of position momentarily. They brought it to ground. Couch had to wait for the ball to bounce down. Best I took it well. Stream through the centre to centre half forward. Ablett. Oh, it's happening at both ends. It's thrilling stuff here. And you can just imagine Gary going back now and thumping this through. Wouldn't he love to do it? Bang. Drop punt. Hooks it badly and misses. Well, I'm not a good writer today. Ablett letting the side down for a moment. And the Cats are a point in front. Got the big hook on that one. The man they call God. Sexton. Straight down the middle. Barnes from behind. Got hands to it. Scholl feeds it out to Bradley. He's been inspiring. Leeson, a little one-two with Bradley. Bradley runs to half forward, unloads from 70. Bacon, goal square, goal! Oh, my. Well, Craig Bradley, you're a champion player. There is no question of that. He's just unloaded with a magnificent barrel that you very rarely see in a pressure time of the game. His performance since quarter time has been outstanding, and the reason that Carlton are now in front of a Geelong side that was rampaging in the first quarter. Good shepherd there by Gleeson, and a great kick from Bradley. Blues in front for the first time today. Bradley has played uh, a couple of inspiring minutes here. Gleeson and he combining twice for great goals. Here's Hocking, Stephen. Left foot, Ablett in the front spot, Hannah at the back, they come from everywhere, the Blues. <laughs> Ablett, clever. Alvin overran it in the end. Still Tommy Alvin. Dean caught, good tackle, free kick coming back. Against Ablett, is it, or against, certainly against Geelong. Allowed to play on. Alvin to Sexton. It was for legging. Now Gleeson, who's uh, played the understudy to Bradley in a couple of those memorable goals, but boy, has he been handy. Both of them have been uh, run Pretty quickly out of their defence, Carlton and Geelong were very good at maintaining possession in the forward line the first quarter. That's fallen right away, and Carlton are just running free from that area. Hinkley short, McGrath, Alvin to sweep in late. McGrath holds his ground and takes a bare stay short, wants it. Christo plugs a gap. McGrath from centre wing. Centre half forward the kick. Kernahan's got back there for the Blues. And runs it out. Brown was coming in late. So what a turnaround here at 11-5 to 10-6. Carlton in front. 
Boundary throw in. A lot of wrestling. Gleason again. Alvin towards midfield, but only Barnes. Drops the mark, time to recover. Hinkley to Simpson, forward of the wing, pumps it back inside the 50. Brownler sets himself, but over the top his teammate Abler. Simon Madden and Stone oh. having a bit to do on the flank, just off screen. There's Gary Ablett summing up the situation. Well, Stoneham is hurt, and I'm not surprised. Madden fell on him. Meantime, Ablett's got the ball. It was a big bear hug and Madden crashed down on Stoneham as Ablett kicks a goal. Everything's happening at the MCG. What a game. Well, there's no point remonstrating with Simon with Justin Madden. Both players had a decent purchase of each, of each other. And Big Justin just proved that he was a better wrestler. But this is a bit of a problem now for Geelong as it doesn't look like Stoneham is in any state whatsoever. And here comes the stretcher. Well, a disaster now for Geelong with their biggest gun, I would suggest, being gunned down. So the stretcher is coming out onto the ground, and Stoneham, hopefully, he's just badly winded, but it could be more serious than that. I've never seen anything quite like that. They were locked in each other's arms, and Madden sort of picked him up, and then fell from what is a great height right on top of him and Stoneham almost bounced as they hit the deck. He was firmly under Madden. I just happened to catch it out the corner of my eye. So watch this again. That's how it started. We can't go any further than this, but he spun him around having lifted him and then fell right down on top of him. He could look meantime kicked the goal. I was going to say, Dennis, you could see Stoneham's feet were off the ground in that freeze frame. Well, he was crushed. Drama are plenty here at the MCG. Barry Stoneham in all sorts of trouble. And as uh, Jared Healy said, arguably the biggest gun Geelong has. Now, there's Stoneham on the ground as Madden is walking away. I just notice in the centre bounce, just getting back to the football momentarily, Bruce, that Riccardi has come into the centre, trying to tag Bradley. And I'm sure that Bradley will try to break that by forcing the issue, minding Gary Hocking. That's Barry Stoneham. Now he can come back on, having come off the ground on a stretcher, even if he didn't come through the interchange case, but I think he did. 11-6, 11-5. So Ablett's goal, which seems... An eternity ago now has put Geelong in front. Williams, Scholl, free kick to Carlton. It's going to be very willing, as you'd expect now. It has been for much of the match, and tempers are at a high. Scholl's kicked the centre half forward. Kernahan with a fly. Well, good take to Julio. Can finish it off here and does beautifully. Three goals to Delulio, and Carlton seem to have the answers. Well, they look a far better side when they have players on the flanks bursting to their big men. Saw so Kernahan go for the leap. Delulio for the second time this quarter hit the work face, took it with one grab, and then finished off with a big goal from about 40 metres. There he is, good one grab, runs in and goals. Certainly one of the quarters of the season so far. Breakneck tempo. Alvin a chance. Spills back. Pickering's hand pass straight up in the air. Bradley spikes it down towards half forward. Spalding got a hand to it. Simpson tidies up behind. Swings it across his body. Bearstow knocked away by Christo. Taken by Williams. Williams inside the 50. It's a high ball. Well done down there by Abuse. Who's wrestled to the ground by Kernahan. Whistle and a bounce. Hughes, who started the game sweeping across half-back, was taken from the ground, getting his chance again to redeem himself as we go down to Ross Glendinning. Yes, Dennis. Well, uh, Barry Stoneham actually doesn't look too bad. He's, the doctor's talking to him to make sure his faculties are there. He got off the stretcher by himself, so he may be OK. Barnes back to Darcy. Sweeps it to McGrath. Hog to close on McGrath. McGrath's kicked the centre wing. Couch leading McKay. McKay did pretty well. Is he holding it now? He is. 
Well, initially he did well to take Couch out of it, but then just kept control of the footy. Couch sweeps away from him, from centre wing. Kick up towards the 50-metre line. Christo at the back. Oh, Brownless recovers best. Charges away. Steadies. Drop punt and wobbles it through. A bad blue by Carlton at half-back there. And Billy made them pay for it. And Geelong is back in front. Well, I was thinking just a few moments ago that Brownless had come out the centre-half forward. And this could be a telling point in his career. Geelong needs someone to lift. They've got one of their big stars off the ground. They're under siege from Carlton. And it's the types of, or the likes of Bill Brownless that must produce an individual effort from there to win this game. Well done, Billy. Play restarts. The Cats lead by a point. Scholl had it, then lost it. Recovers, met very solidly by Hawking, and Scholl will get the free. Slow to get up. And he goes again. This is compelling stuff at the moment. Two sides who want it very badly this afternoon. I guess it was decision time, not only for these teams, but the spectators. An open fire or the footy. Those that have come to the MCG are content in the knowledge they've made the right decision. This is Spalding, midway between the lines. Too far out to score. Goes for distance. Sets it up for Kernahan. Kernahan reaches over the top. He couldn't rake it in. Buse took a long time. Spills to Simpson. Tries to crash his way through. Kernahan got him. And the umpire wants it. Grant Vernon comes in to bounce it down. The West Australian umpire about 35 metres out from goal directly in front. Yes, he was pretty lucky on that occasion, Sean Simpson. He stood up in a pack instead of just keeping your head down looking at the socks and whipping it out to a quick a, point, or a quick teammate Stephen Hawking, McGrath no free kick, Fraser Brown goes for goal, Darcy to get back takes a finger tipper has Buse running alongside of him goes short, gets Robert Scott Scott from half back Scholes held his ground well oh well played Scholl didn't commit, kept a yard and a half away Scott tried to uh, turn him around and Scholl was able to push the ball out of play when Scott kicked it into him. So Carlton keep it in attack. Kinkley caught by Williams as a great tackle. Kernahan was caught by Hocking. So two fine tackles. Williams and Hocking putting them on and a ball up again. 50 metres from Carlton's goal. Barnes and Kernahan. Scott, it's a ball still to be won. Oh, Williams, clever. Should do something constructive. Still a chance. Got himself into trouble. Left foot misses. Scores a level. All tied up. Thought he was just perhaps did the one too many there, Greg Williams. The gift that Julio was on. Tried to get onto that left foot again. And kicked so many goals these days with that left foot. You would have thought one of his four today would have gone through. Besto got it from Darcy and goes to Scott. Scott at right half back. 78 apiece. Hinkley. That was a clever kick. Hinkley brings it back to Simpson. Simpson runs from half back, kicks it to half forward. Brownless from behind, gets it on the ground, recovers well, confronted there by McKay. And that's the only decision the umpire had open to him. They were chest to chest with the ball sandwiched between them. So a bounce. About 55 metres out from Geelong's attacking goal. Brownless out of mid-air. Worth a kick down towards full forward. Now Ablett, what can he weave here? Nothing, he left it behind. Taken by Hannah to the run of Cristo. Cristo boots it out towards the wing. It's a foot race. Malakellis in front to Ulio. Thought quickly and thought well. Booted at about 30 metres. Taken by Simpson. He heads for the boundary line. Malakellis used his body and runs the ball across the boundary line as a result. Ten minutes remaining in the third quarter. Carlton, seven tackles to two in this term. Gleeson should get a free kick. It's been a big performance by Gleeson. Slow start today, then gathered momentum with a couple of goals in the second term and has been excellent in this quarter. Kernahan was whipped away from it there and gets a free kick. Darcy shepherding. Grant Vernon on the spot. Well, I guess the question was, was the ball within five metres? Umpire declared it wasn't. 
probably a bit unnecessary because he had the help of Barnes there. From 50, Kernahan leans back on it and great looking kick. It's a goal. Well, that'll give him some confidence because his kicking hasn't been all that good today. And he's had a couple of famous misses this year. But uh, two now to Kernahan and Carlton are a goal in front. Once again, the free kick. Darcy not looking at the ball until the last minute takes Kernan out. He goes to ground, which accentuates it and doesn't let his side down, kicking a vital goal. Carlton back in front. Carlton by six points. Geelong kicked the first four goals of this game. So full credit to the Blues. Here's Brownless. What a great tackle by Gleeson. Got him in mid-air, and the little man deserves something. Gleeson so busy. 18 possessions so far. And we're not talking about tackles, but that was memorable. Gleeson out wide. Dean. So often that pair combined. Dean to Alvin. Three of their veterans. Three of their greats. Alvin chips in short. Strong Mark Kernahan. Once again, the move resulting from a good passage of play across half-back. Gleeson getting the ball out to Peter Dean, who run off his man. And Tommy Elving providing the run. It's amazing how this game has changed. Initially, it was Geelong with the runners, and Carlton had to block them up in the second quarter. They got back into the game. Now, Carlton's on ball as they're on top, and it's up to Geelong now to block them up. Kernahan for his third, and a lead of 12 points. Hit the post near the top. A lead of seven points. Just over eight minutes till three-quarter time. 13-7 to 12-6. Riccardi still tracking Bradley around the ground. Gary Hawkins picking up Adrian Gleeson. Bairstow leads. Hinkley to himself. Has the ball in the pocket. Gets by Fraser Brown. Settles and drives it back towards midfield. McKay did well to get in front, recovers well too, he's a very good player. De Ulio the target, Kernahan to help, a oh, little one towards Bradley, took a while to get there, Riccardi. And a pity for Carlton there that uh, Kernahan was unable to use De Ulio's pace. If they'd been able to squeeze a handball somewhere, De Ulio might have been able to run on. Kernahan and Barnes, Miss Gleeson Kernahan. Left hand handball, Mr. Yulio, but gives him some hope. Bairstow runs right. him down. No free kick. Dead set throw. Simpson now gets a free kick from the back. Sweeps it out. Away goes Darcy. Centre wing. Pickering and Christo. Christo's been all right, hasn't he? Out of play. Yes, Christo did well in the first half on Mark Bairstow. Bairstow now having a couple of runs on the ball. Christo with a new role. Madden, Stephen Hawking tries to stop him, surely gives a free kick away, the advantage given to Gleeson who runs his full measure, then an awkward kick for Kernahan in the pocket and out of play. Gleeson, no, 13 and 7, Kernahan two goals, three, six marks. Carlton threatening to pinch a break here before three quarter time, they're doing all the attacking. 13-7, 12-6. Barnes again, Gleeson tries to crash his way through. Brown went down, Gleeson slaps it out, taken by Buse to Darcy. Darcy across the goal face, boots it out wide. Now Alban, if it stays in, has a chance to make something of this. Well, it trickles away, tantalisingly close for Tom Alban, but we've got to throw it. A brief respite. It's been a pulsating term, Williams. Brilliantly done. Madden back to Williams. So strong on the ball. He kicks it down towards the kickoff line. In from the side, Kernahan managed to get it on the ground. Barnes slaps it out. Buse tries to go through. Melichelis against the flow, hard against the boundary. Boots it back towards the wing. Now the big man. He tracks it towards the wing, but coming up to meet him, Couch was too nimble, and he succeeds only in giving it straight to McKay. McKay 70 metres out, Puddin spots Balding, it runs free behind, taken by Barnes, confronted by McCormick, he gets it to Hinkley, Hinkley has run down from behind, it was a strong tackle, it brought him down, Riccardi scrambles it out, 
Bradley tried to keep it in with that tackle, but Geelong work it to the wing. McKay appeared to be pushed in the back. No free kick, whistle, and a ball up down towards right half forward. Once again, Ken Inkley's pension for getting on and having a run got him into trouble. There was a quick hands to be given there. The handball was on, and he wanted to have a run. Pressure games it just isn't the time often to do those sorts of things. Pickering against Madden to Gleeson. Had Brown inside, blazed away. Buse took the mark. Scott provides a lead out wide. Buse holds it up. McGrath comes for the handball. Gets him. McGrath running off. Drop punt to centre wing. Christo sets himself. Should have taken it. McKay. Handball was very good. Madden should go to Gleeson. Gleeson has a couple of options. Left foot. Kernahan. Darcy or Barnes running back off the ground. Diulio hit the post. Oh. <laughs> It rattled the crossbar. Gee, Barnes, um, interesting there. He's running against it, and Kernahan might have been a bit stiff. Yeah, well, my immediate thought was it had to be a free kick to Kernahan. Perhaps the fact that he touched the ball swayed the decision in his favour. Good kick by Darcy to Malakalis. Well, he's going to take Dulio on, and around he goes. Malakalis now gets the ball up to centre wing. Madden going back, one hand. Dean, Carlton had the numbers at the back. Miss Bradley, but he's in such rare form, you'd expect him to make something of it. The kick's wobbly. Oh, spooled in a chance. Free kick against McGrath. Just gave Earl a bit of a clip. It was really an all-or-nothing attempt by Tim McGrath there. If he missed the ball, it's always going to be Carlton. Kernahan the target again. Barnes getting back to double team him. It falls to Alvin. Alvin. Grubbers went along the ground. Who's booted a touch? It doesn't matter. Buse pushes it across the line. So the margin is out to nine points now. It could be more. Two posters in this term from Carlton. Who have done the bulk of the attacking. Geelong now have Gary Ablett one out in the square with Milan Hanna. The only problem for them is it hasn't gone across their half forward line for most of this quarter. There's Bearstow from Hinkley around the outer side. He trots, kicks it towards half forward. Big pack up. McKay knocks it forward, taken by Scott. Great evasion. They work it forward. Tudor got it across to Couch. He kicks inside the 50. Brilliantly gathered by Ablett. Can he break away? Good pressure from Hannah. Forces the error. And Dean takes the mark in the back pocket. Now they'll run it out. Back come the Blues. Bradley sizes up the options. Kicks it for space. Alvin can run on. Pursuing him is Ablett. This will be interesting. Ablett prepared to concede a kick, but he fell over. The umpire didn't award one. Hannah robbed of it by Malakellis. Malakellis runs through the wing. Feeds the hand pass to Couch. Man on on the kickoff line is Brownless. Brownless can turn around and run to goal. Ratton is closing. Got him. Not in time. Yes, he did. He altered the kick. Great pressure by Ratton. Brownless pleads his case. It hit the post. Let's have a look at this replay. Billy, bit unfortunate. Tried to bend the football. You don't see the man off screen. He could have handballed it too, just drawing Ratton in. Is that a free kick against Ratton? Well, I didn't think so when I looked at it, but I was more watching the way that Brownless dropped the ball onto his boot. His Dean does Not a hickle. Of de desperation, no matter. Sexton. Do you reckon Tommy Alvin would be happy? That was a behind. Bad giveaway down on the wing. The Blues in front. It's been a thrilling match. Eight point margin. Williams traps it, but uh, now Hocking, who's been quiet after a brilliant opening. Riccardi. Christo well played again. A good effort. Got his fist in there and found the boundary line. 12, 7, 13, 9. Madden and Barnes. Gleeson was there. Ratton to Sexton. Oh, poor handball. Riccardi's kick Ablett. But uh, courage by Dean. It's been good, Dean. It's against taller opponents all day. Started on O'Reilly and has had Bill Brownless. Gives away four or five inches. Oh. Oh. You'd be... Uh, sweating wouldn't you on a day like today after that one Hannah how far can you run well he had one bounce in that 30 meter jog up the wing 
Darcy, Alvin at the bottom of the pack. Leeson carried it forward, taken by O'Reilly. The handball may find the boundary line. Bairstow's getting there, keeps in play for the cat. Bairstow takes Oliver on, swings it back to O'Reilly. O'Reilly from halfback measures the kick, looks for Couch. McKay, that's a good duel. Or Couch lent back and gets a free kick. Yes, he's a bit unlucky, McKay, and letting the umpire know was Couch that uh, started that battle. Dropping his body weight back onto McKay, had no other option. Hughes gets around Williams, gets around McKay. Centering kick, Ablett the target. Good mark by Dean. To Bradley. A couple of bounces, a third one, a fourth one. Now steadies. Tries a torpedo. Oh, got it. Just right for Sporting. Might have been lucky. Shows lucky. Sporting for Kernahan. Darcy Kernahan, good mark. Well, the captain can go back and goal here. It's going to really hurt Geelong. We're getting very close to three-quarter time. And once again, a big thrust forward from deep in defence for Carlton. And Darcy just too small on that occasion. Got the foot in the back, but couldn't push out Stephen Kernahan. Very strong legs and just too tall. So it's going to be a vital kick after the siren in a similar position just before half-time. Kernahan's drop punt looks like it's all right. It's a goal. Carlton has charged away here, 14-9 to 12-7. Being back. Well, Cardi's out of the middle now, so he's been released from Bradley. Looks like Pickering has that job. The start of the final term of the MCG. Geelong in trouble. Carlton have been inspired since midway through the second term certainly and the umpire will bounce it again yes inspired by the champion qualities of craig bradley who set them alight along with greg williams who lifted his work rate after quarter time there he is on screen craig bradley bitterly cold day 14 points the difference gary hawking down towards half forward awkward bounce ratten dean shoal now williams in trouble Hocking got him. Scott tries to crash his way through. Back comes Steve Hocking. Tudor, clever hand pass. This is Merriman on the 50 to Bearstow to Brownless. Brownless aided by a very good shepherd from Couch. He's kicked it out of bounds on the fall. Well, he should have done far better. Couch did terrifically well on McKay to buy him some time. Well, a bad miss there. Remembering that uh, Billy hit the post in another remarkable incident in the third quarter. A quarter of remarkable incidents as Dean kicks the ball to the boundary line and it rolls out. Geelong has kicked the first goal in each of the first three quarters. And you'd reckon they'd have to kick the first one here to win. Barnes and Madden try some more wrestling as it goes to the boundary line. Brown kept it in. Pinched 40 metres for Carlton. Punched away at the back by O'Reilly. Taken by Pickering. Had an airy. Williams, who's been excellent. Buse. Bradley worrying him out of it. Still Buse. Shoals little handball. Gleeson. Still with Gleeson. McGrath didn't put him down. Gleeson carries it another 10 metres forward out of play. Gleeson, Bradley and Williams... All getting over 20 touches at this stage of the match. Sporting does the work with O'Reilly. Hocking. Oh, the brown tackle was good. Against Pickering. Fraser Brown from centre wing. Kernahan's in the box seat. Went early. Darcy tapped it away. Coming back, Buse. Running out of room. The handball. Hogg. Back towards Kernahan. Kernahan went to ground. He's got a handball away. Carlton with a few numbers. Deulio Court should be holding it. McGrath's tackle was a beauty. The advantage is played. Scott runs it around the boundary line. Kicks the ball to centre wing. Riccardi and Sexton. Still Riccardi and Sexton. Tudor. The tackle by Brown couldn't stop him. McKay went for it. Pickering did very well. Didn't use Riccardi. Goes to Ablett. Hannah with him. Oh, Ablett. Second attempt. No play on, called. Cool. Now Ablett besieged. And he'll be disappointed. Let's have a look what happens on screen. 
Well, it appeared to be enough. Ball did bounce there in the finish. Well, that's got to be a mark, doesn't it? Thrown in, Madden fisted back towards the boundary line, out of bounds. And a throw in, so a real test for the Cats, this. Carlton, so aggressive, so strong at the ball. Off the ground by Barnes, this is Bearstow. Quick hands to Tudor to Pickering. Not a good kick gained, only about five metres. Scholl out of mid-air. Christo assessed it pretty well. Knocked it about ten metres. Steve Hocking in trouble. This is Scott. Sweeping hand pass. Scholl's in the road. He's been handy. Now Brownless. Gleeson didn't get him that time. He got him in the previous turn. Brownless gets that kick inside the 50. Now Sexton scrambles it back towards halfback. Well played by Scott. Oh, great tackle by Sexton. Spills to Tudor. Sexton got him from the ground. Now Merriman almost missed the ball. Dean concedes a behind with the help of Hannah. Some desperate stuff there. Carlton, 14-9. Geelong, 12-8. Hannah goes very short, but it was accurate to Dean. From the back pocket. He's kicked the centre wing. Sexton the target. Gary Hocking gets back there. Sexton with a chance though. Had a fumble. Left foot kick. Into the space. Fraser Brown. Good shepherding by Gleeson. Brown goes on to Kernahan. Oh, great mark. A terrific stretch by the captain. Well, wouldn't this bring the house down if he could go from here? He's had plenty of practice at shots from this position. What a magnificent grab. Good kick by Fraser, by Brown. He sets up his skipper for another shot at goal and perhaps the final nail in the coffin. Long way to go yet, but Carlton going very well. Kernahan, good looking kick, he's got it. Well, Kernahan with his fourth. Uh, Stephen Silvani, who was a late withdrawal today, and Joe Bailey look on. And the Blues have charged away. Yes, Joe was pretty impressed with this goal from the skipper. There's Fraser Brown, pinpoint accuracy, a player that's been down a little bit this year. One of the reasons Carlton's been lacking a little bit. Some of their first year players of last year are just a shade down. Due to big lead all of a sudden. The Blues by 19 points. Scholl has had a good match. Kicks the ball up to the 50 metre line. Darcy away from Kernahan. A poor handball. Fraser Brown with him Hinkley and now out of play. Well, the pundits at the end of the day will be talking about the 20-day break for Geelong. When they came out of the blocks, we, you could argue that it was a bonus. But uh, as an ex-player, I've always thought you're better off, your, the body's like a machine, and you're better off just getting into a rhythm and go, go, going. Williams to Brown and to Ulio, and McGrath runs it out of play. And that's not to suggest Geelong can't win this game. It's still very open. I think it's a distinct advantage to have your season interrupted by such a long break. Gleeson trying to barge his way through. Buse twists and turns. Finds O'Reilly. O'Reilly from half back up towards centre half forward. Brownless caught underneath it. Ratton did a very good job to punch it away. Merriman's in there with him. The tackling by Carlton has been excellent. McKay puts one on there and they hold it up again. So Kernahan's fourth goal a few moments ago has given Geelong a nice little break. Madden thumps it away, taken by Couch. Couch looked, then waits the kick to half forward. Merriman and Ratton. Ratton punches it away. Now Pickering goes back to Gary Hocking. He's had very few touches since quarter time. Ablett, Hannah, surely Ablett that time, no. Gee, Hannah's hands look to be around him, but out of play. Gary Ablett has made a habit of just leaning back on, their, on his players, and I think when we were talking about the umpires, pinpointing it that's what they were talking about don't give those easy free kicks when Al Ablett is the perpetrator Tudor goes to ground he's going to get a free kick Lee Tudor Bearstow goes on and hits the post for the kick against Christo and Tudor should kick his second from here interesting one about the advantage rule really, here Dennis because their skipper here in Bearstow elects to have a shot at goal following that he thought it was an advantage to have a shot, but now that all of a sudden they're bringing it back. 
Tudor from only 15 metres shouldn't miss. He's got it. So the Cats stick. That's a goal they needed. 13-8 to 15-9. Yes, an important one. They need a couple of more important ones also. You'll see the free kick coming up here. And let's just see if we can see Bairstow follow it through. There's the tap on and the free kick. Bairstow picks up that football. Goes on and shoots at goal. This is the advantage rule. Real worry. So Geelong edge closer. But generally Carlton, with the exception of the first 15 minutes today, have been the master. Bradley off the ground. Worth a kick. Almost a kick. Inside the 50 it bounces. McGrath heads for the boundary line. De Ulio, who's been handy, knocks it Carlton's way. McGrath tidies up, though. Gets it to Darcy. Now he's in trouble. Real trouble, Darcy. What's he done here? That's a great snapshot. He hit the post. Even the umpire had a smile on his face with that one. <laughs> great pressure from Stephen Kernahan, though. Darcy coming across the ground looking for the quick change. Just misjudged Kernahan's pace a little bit and almost kicked an own goal. Gee, he would have been disappointed if he kicked it out of bounds on the full, wouldn't he? Absolutely. Madden goes up and thumps it down. Mind you, he's not too happy at the present time. McGrath tries to crash his way through. McKay in trouble. Couch got him. McCormack stood up in the tackle. Couch didn't. And we've got a whistle. You'd have to question Geelong at the minute. We noticed that Stone and gave the thumbs up at three-quarter time. Now would be the time to get him back on the ground, wouldn't it? There he is, actually on the boundary line. Bounce meantime on the 50. Barnes gets it down. Gleeson hacks it across the ground. O'Reilly heads for the boundary line. Spalding worked against him well. Taken by Buse. The hand pass over the top, but there's no space for Couch. It's knocked away by McKay. And it's out of bounds. 15-10 to 13-8. Carlton lead. Stoneham and Simpson together. Stoneham a real key here. If they could get 15 minutes out of him, it could turn the tail. Madden gave it up to Malakalis. Malakalis' high kick to centre wing. Sexton and Riccardi. Oh, good mark, Sexton. Pretty Set himself, didn't he? There, Sexton's centering kick. Greg Williams at the back of this. Almost a one-hander. Went to ground, looked for a free kick. Hinkley gone by Deolio, holding the footy. Kernahan leads, Dorleo kicks it to the pocket, Kernahan runs onto it and marks. Well, nothing Tim Darcy could do about that one. With Carlton playing all their forwards up on the half forward line. Kernahan's got the whole full forward line to lead into, and here we see he elects to go to his favourite flank on the MCG, where he kicked the goal from not so long ago. This kick not as tough as Darcy's. <laughs> Kernahan going for goal number five. The drop punt misses that one to behind. So he's had plenty of shots to the champion. He's had four goals for today. And the Blues are 15 11 to 13 8. So Riley about to bring it back in. Member side with a kick. Spalding stood his ground in front. That hurt. Barnes cannon into the back of him. This is McKay. Gets by Tudor, 60 metres out. Long probing kick. Kernahan from behind. Darcy did well. Alvin keeps it alive. Gleeson surrounded. Darcy heads for the boundary line and finds it. That was good play twice by the veteran. So a throw in alongside the behind post. 15-11, 13-8. Carlton seemed to be doing enough. O'Reilly thumps it out of bounds. Real gutsy performance by the Blues today. Slow start, very important game. They've steadied like a good side. O'Reilly knocks it out of bounds again. And Carlton have got Bradley on the half-forward line. His man, Gary Hocking, then is taken out of the play and perhaps one of the only ways Geelong will win is if they can get Gary Hocking up onto the ball. It's balling from behind, knocked it down to Darcy. The hand passes across the goal face. Hinkley falls to ground, but as he went, got a boot to the ball and another throw in. Inside 14 minutes remaining in this game. And that tells the story. Carlton 
tackled strongly all day. Spalding slaps it back towards the kickoff line. Darcy. Kernahan got a cruel bounce. Buse comes away, finds Tudor up from the back pocket. Lee Tudor. He's got a couple of goals this afternoon. Centres this one. Riccardi running back with the flight of the ball, but McKay outnumbered, did well. Knocked at goal with Steve Hocking in trouble. Stood up in the tackle, gets it to Couch. Couch forward of half back. Goes to half forward. Brownless in the air. Couldn't hang on. Bairstow couldn't run onto the loose ball. Knocked out by Ratton. Picked up brilliantly there by Hocking. Couch. His hand pass was smothered. It came back from McKay. Smothered to Gleason. Gleason kicks inside the 50. Hinkley goes back with the flight of the ball. Fists it towards the boundary. And now O'Reilly. De Ulio was pushed in the back surely. Hinkley. Alvin's tackle was a good one. Carlton hold it up. So the Blues leading by 15 points. Williams. To Hogg. Around the body. Kernahan versus Darcy. A tumbling ball. Taken by Buse. Kernahan still in there. Good battle by Brown. And again, Carlton over to hold the football up. Keeping it very much in the heart of their forward line. Yes, I'm sure Parkin would have been most impressed with the pressure that they've applied since quarter time. That's what's got them back into this game, along with a few individual efforts. Their tackling in their forward line has been outstanding. McGrath conceding a behind, and lucky for Geelong that uh, didn't just sit up that ball and stop dead because Carlton was about to swoop. I'd just like to mention McKay's 1% work, his hand, just getting that hand on the ball or smothering or knocking it on has been outstanding today. Has had a very good game across half-back. Darcy. An attacking kick straight down the centre. There's McKay again with that 1% as uh, Gerard was pointing out. Thumping it away. Couches high ball. Sporting runs onto it. Takes the mark at centre wing. Uses Williams inside. Goes to Hogg. Scott tries to run him down. Hogg's kick. Now Kernahan sets himself. Has two opponents. Alvin tried to shark. McGrath fell from his hands. Buse caught by Alvin. Ducks his head. Goes to Malakalis. Goes to McGrath. Geelong are hanging on. Comes out to half back. Shoal's going to be outnumbered. The bounce important. Besto runs it in front. Trying to put. Sexton tried to put the pressure on. Here's Tudor. Riccardi didn't stop Shoal. He should have. Shoal tries to run Tudor down. Puts enough pressure on him. Barnes is tied, it runs out of play. That right forward pocket. Yes, it wasn't a good effort by Riccardi. It's a couple of times today he's run forward ahead of the football instead of attacking it, particularly in this last quarter. It's been a bit disappointing. Geelong desperate for a goal. Brownless looking for a free kick in the front spot. Gleeson and out of play with Riccardi with him. Gleeson today. 17 and 7 and a couple of big goals and a couple of little handballs to Bradley which resulted in spectacular goals in that third quarter. Yes, he's been terrific. Madden gets it down. Hocking went to ground. McKay, what a resolute defender, heads for the boundary line. And out of bounds it goes. Biesto sensing the gravity of all of this. Geelong in real trouble here. Madden gets it down, taken by Pickering, bounces inside the 50. Ratton has defended well as well. He pushes the ball across the boundary line yet again. They're playing with great discipline. The clock continues to run inside the last 11 minutes. 15-12, 13-8. Brownless in front. Madden heads for the boundary line. Sexton knocks it on. Christo overran it. Steve Hocking. Clever hands. Bairstow had left before the ball had arrived. And it goes out of bounds. 21 possessions for Mark Bairstow, who's counting his 22nd there, but it came unglued. Bradley knocks on from Madden towards the wing. Spalding goes to ground. Running on out there was McKay. They're going in very solidly. Christo hammers it down towards half forward. Well played by Alvin. Little deflection down at the advantage of Gleeson, but the kick goes a mile in the air. That will be iced. Hogg has taken the mark. It barely went 10. It certainly went a long way up. Yeah, good mark here to Matthew Hogg. But once again, we saw two valuable knock-ons from Carlton. And they've just used that tactic all day, kicked the ball off the ground, get it going. 
in the direction of your goals with tap-ons, smothers, whatever you like. And that will pay dividends perhaps if Hogg can kick another goal, but their desperation has been just that shade higher than Geelong's for most of the day and will probably be the major difference when we look at the scoreboard at the end of the quarter. Very important kick this one. Hogg pulls it left. From behind. The official attendance today, 37,119. Steve Silvani looking reasonably contented. All he needs. Oh, he's got a pair cold. of gloves there too, Dennis. Don't blame him. Darcy straight down the spine. Sexton and Mark taken by Brownless in front of Madden. Sexton at the back. Brownless gives it off to McGrath. You just wonder if Geelong could make Carlton pay here because Carlton has had a lot of opportunities to sew this game up. Barnes caught the tackle, was terrific. It was McKay again. Carlton have been uh, wonderful on the football in the last three quarters. Hocking over the top of it. Carlton looking for a free kick. Sexton and Christo amongst them and Gleeson. Best away, but a ball up. Well, 90% of the game is played when you haven't got the ball in your hands. And what you do in those in that 90% often is the difference between good and bad sides. And Carlton's work when they haven't got the football has been so superior to Geelong's today. They're smothering, they're tackling, their support running. And it's been a major difference and a major factor in them coming back from behind after the first quarter. Merriman off the ground for that point. Hannah's kick a good one to Dean. 39-15-13. About eight minutes remaining. Dean's kicked the centre wing. Spalding. Alvin. Kept it in. Cleverly to Brown. Should give it to Bradley. Goes for goal instead. Kicks it very well and just misses. Well, handball to Bradley and I reckon it might have been Curtains. 15-14 to 13-9. Hard to see Geelong getting back. But Carlton really should be four or five goals in front at this stage. It should be out of reach. Hinkley to himself. Drives it around the outer side. Taken by Kernahan with some time. Confronted out there by Darcy. Chips it back and finds Williams. Williams at right half forward. 15, 14, 13, 9. His 27th possession. Back towards the pocket, Hogg, a little indecisive. Gary Hawking's got it, releases Darcy out of defence, sends the ball around the outer side wing. Pickering was held by the arm, surely, and will take the free kick. Just forward of the wing. Couch is down at full forward, still with McKay. Ablett just running up onto the half forward line, trying to get involved in the action. Pickering goes for distance. They'll contest about 30 metres out. McKay with discipline again, thumps the ball about 30 metres. Riccardi was held, socket off the ground by Gleeson. There was no free kick for Riccardi, no compassion from the umpire. Interesting, Malakella, strong tackle, McCormack. Across it comes to Buse. Alvin got him. Oh, this tackling is irresistible. Well done by Scholl, got it across to Sexton. Not to be outdone, Geelong apply a couple. Buse got Sexton, but now it's with Gleeson. Sweeping hand pass to Hogg. 70 metres out, not a particularly good kick. Awkward bounce though for McGrath. It runs free. De Ulio back to goal. The sharpshooter now in space. Kicks. He's got it. Four to De Ulio. And that should just about sink the Cats. 16-14 to 13-9. Tommy Alvin takes a break. Stephen Ollo back onto the ground. And here we'll see the runners from Carlton. Hogg just went straight down the corridor. You have to feel for him a little bit there because Brown changed the direction of his lead after he put his head down to kick. But the Ulio does a sharp U-turn and goals. A steaming finish by the Blues. 16-14 to 13-9. De Ulio out of the centre. Darcy this time in front of Kernahan. Takes the mark. And the critics have been critical of them not having any runners. But what a difference a rampaging De Ulio does make on that forward line. Pickering got a bad bounce. McCormack takes a bounce. Oh. Well, again, Bradley Can't on his own. And the ball still in play. So a bit of an anti-climax after all that. Not a good finish by McCormack. Buse with a couple of bounces. Goes to centre wing. Looks for Gary Hocking. And Hogg with him at out of play. 
What's the situation with Tommy Alvin and Ross Glendinning? Oh, not, not much there, uh, Bruce. All the running that Tommy does, just got a bit of cramp in both calves, so he'll be OK. No Any ice there. required, Ross? Uh, hopefully not. Gee, that would be cruel, having to ice anything today. There's Hocking. Besto, high one to centre half forward. Barnes is in the front. Sexton. Shaw almost put a tackle on him. McKay, who's uh, played the percentages outstandingly well. Riccardi's handball, good. Malakalis, Merriman in the pocket. 45 metres out. Just to highlight how cold it has been here in Melbourne today. All football was counted in Ballarat because it was snowing heavily. Only an hour outside of Melbourne. Also snowing at Red Hill in the morning to Peninsula. Merriman's kick to the goal square and thumped away courtesy of Dean and Barnes from behind. So Geelong not doing enough here. 13, 10, 16, 14. And Carlton, after looking almost out early, are going to come away with a very, very impressive and important victory. McKay, we've liked his game. Keeps it in, well done. Trips the light fantastic around the boundary line, then chips it in short to Hogg. And Hogg can go. From a Footscray player, goes down towards the 50. Kernahan on the lead. It's getting too easy now. Bear in mind, Geelong got the start, but Carlton surging at the finish. Oliver on the lead. Takes the mark on his chest. 16-14, plays 13-10. And the Carlton fans delirious. It was always going to be a tough game as the pass comes in. But they've responded to the challenge. Carlton, a club where the total hasn't always equaled the sum of the parts, but today they've been terrific. And they've had a few posters. The margin could have been more. That's the third. Oliver hits from about 35 metres. There's the time remaining. It seems now beyond the Cats, 16-15 to 13-10. Darcy into the centre, Christo at the back, Williams missed the target that time, Tudor to O'Reilly, good handball inside the couch, left-hand handball, a bit slow that one, Scholl with Bairstow and out of play. Sexton I should say. That uh, Carlton defence hasn't it stood up after that barrage early when they looked as if they were going to be overrun completely. But they weren't vanquished at all this team. Again out of play. See the vast difference in the tackles in the second half. Now McKay, who's just grown and grown as this match has gone on. He's kicked to centre wing. McCormack's leap. The handball on, giving Spalding some hope. Hinkley running across in front of him. Kernahan, in fact, got a lovely bounce. Chips it back, and Gleeson takes it. Good play by the captain. Got the best bounce imaginable from that setup, and then used the old noggin and went back to Gleeson. Watch this one. Sits, tap, looks, hits him, takes it. Just experience at work there. He knows that this game is in hand. All they have to do is waste time can play the percentages a couple of goals to Gleeson today played a terrific match and he snuck it through for a third well the Blues have really made a point here they've got contributors all around the ground and they've stretched this lead way out now to 29 points and well, Carlton on one side, many people believe we're a chance to play off in this series finals, this year's finals. They've been disappointed today, but they're back in town now. So the margin has blown out to 29 points under two minutes. Remain in the game. Bradley towards half forward. Spalding nonchalantly went back to Gleason, who's pretty tired and couldn't bend down. Williams hasn't knocked away by Stephen Hawking. Back comes Williams, though. He's over the ball, slaps it out eventually. On his knees, the hand pass came out, but not in time. Pickering is getting a free kick, though. He was the man who tried to get that ball to a teammate. Now McGrath on the overlap, sends it down towards half-forward. Barnes from behind. That was a good grab at the top of Dean. 
Barnes wants to go. Well, we said at the start that perhaps Geelong had their best side in for the season. What does that all mean? Here's Christo. Perhaps we're not very good judges. Christo out of the back pocket. Floats one back towards the wing. Barnes goes up. Must be paid a mark. What's the umpire doing? Yes, he's paying the mark. It'll come back to Barnes then. But a state of origin break certainly bought them some time, perhaps too much time, to get their squad reassembled. Here's Brownless. Is it left half forward? Ironical cheers for Billy. Goes for distance. Down towards full forward. Ablett has been negated since half time. And from the side, Dean fists it through for a minor score. There will definitely be, though, some big question marks about Geelong following this game, Dennis. Seemingly they were in control at quarter time, but they've let another one slip, as they did against Essendon here, early part of the season. They play Fitzroy and Adelaide in the next two weeks. And they do have to face now the real prospect of missing this season's finals. Perhaps this game, Bruce, will be seen as a turning point in the season. Sexton to Dean. Dean's kick towards Kernahan. Hinkley in the front spot. Off the ground by Oliver. Another one. Oh, hit the post for the second time. But importantly, he showed plenty of talent, Oliver, and he may be one man that can really launch Carlton into the finals if he can get some form. He's missed all of the season with an injury. He went away, kicked 100 goals for Castlemaine last year after playing the first two games of the season. But more importantly, Carlton have had a decisive victory here after Geelong stormed away and kicked the first four goals of the match. The man on screen really couldn't turn it on, as he usually does at the MCG, and Hannah did a particularly good job. And down on the ground is Ross Blendening. Thanks, Stuart. I've got Andrew McCoy. Yeah, Andrew, fantastic game. You must seem pleased with your comeback. Yeah, it's a, it's a good comeback to be five down after the ten-minute mark of the first quarter. It's a great comeback by the boys. <laughs> In your teamwork in the back line, Andrew, a lot of the little 1% stuff, just manning up, knocking you on, smothering, admired all your blokes work well together. Yeah, we, we made a point of, if we can't get hold of it, just knock it forward, knock it forward at all costs, and even just bring it forward with the body at all costs. And listen, next week you've got uh, Adelaide at uh, Princess Park, trying to get some of your teammates from last week, something to look forward to. Yeah, it is. it'll be fun, it'll be great. Right. We're looking forward to a big challenge there too. Well, good luck to you, well Thanks done today. Much, well done. Andrew McKay, one of the stars of this afternoon, one of the stars of the State of Origin Carnival, runner-up in the McGarry last season, still only 23 years of age. The final scoreline then at the MCG, Carlton, emphatic winners, 17-16 to 13-11.